Karna 2. Liberated Soul Inseparable from Brahman. Sutra 4. Avibhagena drishtatvat. In liberation the soul exists. Avibhagena in a state of inseparableness from the self. Drishtvat. For it is so noticed in the Upanishad. Translation, in liberation the soul exists in a state of inseparableness from the Supreme Self, for so it is noticed in the Upanishad. One would like to know whether the entity which becomes established in its own self after reaching the highest light remains separate from the Supreme Self or continues in a state of identification. Now, when in such an inquisitive mood, one might conclude that the being exists separately because in the text, he moves about there. Chandogya 8.12.3 speaks of something holding something else in itself. And in the text, having reached the light, a subject and an object are separately mentioned. The aphorist explains to such a doubting one that the liberated soul remains identified with the Supreme Self. Why so? because it is so noticed in the Upanishad. Thus it is that texts like That Thou Art, Chandogya 687, I Am Brahman, Brihadaranyaka 1410, where one does not see anything else, Chandogya 724.1, but there is no such second thing separate from it which it can see. Brihadaranyaka 4.3.23, etc., reveal the Supreme Self as non-separate from the individual soul. And in conformity with the logic of becoming what one resolves to be, the result, freedom, should accord with one's Upanishadic knowledge. The text, O Gautama, as pure water poured on pure water becomes verily the same so also becomes the self of the man of knowledge who is given to deliberation on the Supreme Self. Katu Upanishad 2.1.15 And other texts which set forth the nature of the liberated soul, as also the illustrations like the river and the sea, Mundaka Upanishad 3.2.8, reveal only this fact of non-difference. As regards any statement implying difference, that is possible in a secondary sense, even in a context of non-difference, as is seen in such texts as, O Venerable Sir, on what is that infinity established? On its own majesty. Chandogya 7.24.1 Delighting in his own self, disporting in his own self. Chandogya 7.25.2 Namaste. I'm laughing because I'm thinking about this description of the liberated soul in the spiritual world and how mere words cannot capture this uh, unthinkable, indescribable, transcendental relationship between the liberated self and, you know, the self. <laughs> because on the one hand, there is no distinction between them. Like that quote mentions taking pure water and pouring it into pure water. They merge completely. There's no distinction whatsoever. And the intelligence likes to draw distinctions. Well, this is this and this is that. <laughs> But in this case, you can't because their qualities are identical. 
their attributes, whatever attributes you want to assign to them, they both have. So how you can tell the difference? You can't. You can't. On the other hand, there is a difference <laughs> because they have a relationship. They have activities. Huh? In the spiritual world, after the liberation of the individual soul, it comes to the spiritual world in which it is both one and different simultaneously, inconceivably, from the self, from the Lord. So, you know, the only simile or example I've been able to come up with is when kids play, they take on roles. And everybody knows that those roles are imaginary. Huh? Cowboys and Indians. Uh, good boy, good boys and bad boys, or what you know, whatever the game is, right? Everybody knows it's a fiction. Yet, the whole key to enjoying the game lies in dropping that knowledge. Oh boy, here we get into some really difficult territory. It's like when you go and see a movie. The people who make movies call what they're trying to do the suspension of disbelief. You go in a movie theater and you see this big picture up on the screen and it appears to be, you know, a, a particular place in time, maybe a historic place in time. And these various characters are running around saying and doing things and, you know, to get you into the movie, to get you uh, to identify with the movie, you have to set aside your disbelief that, ah, this is just a picture on a big screen, isn't it? Otherwise, you can't really enjoy the movie if you're aware <laughs> that it's an illusion. If you think too hard about what is happening, huh? You can't enjoy the artistry of the movie maker or the musician or, you know, whatever is being presented. In the same way, the self kind of divides itself. But knowing that it's an illusion, it divides itself into the <laughs> Isha Tvam, Upadi and the Jiva Twam Upadi, the Lord and the individual soul who takes birth in a body. Now, in the spiritual world, there are no bodies. So he'll describe later on, it's like in a dream. In a dream, you apparently have a body. And you're going here and there and doing this and seeing that and whatever, right? But those activities take place only within the mind. Even, you know, if you dream of like what? Mount Everest or something like that. You're not actually going to Mount Everest. There, there isn't enough room within this body for Mount Everest. Huh? So you can't be really going there. I mean going there in uh, Jagra consciousness, you're going in Svapna, dream consciousness, only in the mind. Huh? It's only in your mind. People like to say about abstract thoughts and dreams and, you know, daydreams and uh, aspirations, such like that. It's all in your mind. Well, so what? If you suspend your disbelief, then it's as real as anything else in this crazy world of illusion. So this is what the self does in the spiritual world as well. Just for fun. Get it? It's fun. It's a game. It's a, just like when kids play cowboys and Indians, you know, or, uh, 
astronauts and space monsters or whatever kids play these days. I don't know. The suspension of disbelief is the key to enjoying it. You know, and if some adult comes along and says, you know, Johnny, you're not really a pirate. <laughs> you're Johnny Smith from down the street. Is Johnny going to want to hear this? No, he's going to say, a vast lover, stow it. <laughs> he's not going to break his character. Right? If he's really in the game and really has suspended his disbelief. So in the same way, nobody wants to have a party pooper <laughs> come along and say, well, your concept of God and your relationship with God is simply an illusion. Huh? Yeah, it's an illusion. But don't spoil the dream. Huh? Don't reintroduce the disbelief in the apparent duality between the soul and God. Uh, you'll, you'll ruin the party, you know? We're having a game here. We're playing. And one side is apparently the Lord. The other side is apparently the individual. And then there are pastimes. Why are they called pastimes? Leela. Leela means play. It means something you don't have to do. You're doing it for the sake of enjoyment. Isn't it? But the key to that enjoyment is giving up the specific knowledge that, oh, this is just play. That's the secret of Leela. Both the Lord and the devotee, both the Brahman and the individual, forget that they are really both the self and they're both one. And then they enjoy. Now, this enjoyment is always going to be temporary, impermanent. Why? Because the substrate that it exists on and, and which it is an uh, overlay on, a projection, an adhyasa, a superimposition, is also temporary. Uh, the material world, including its subtle aspect, which was created first before the gross aspect, hmm? Even though that lasts a very, very long time, it's still finite. It still comes to an end at some point. And before it does, the game has to end. Uh, the game has to end, but it's okay. Huh? Terence McKenna coined this phrase, nothing lasts, but nothing is lost. Why? Because the stuff that the world is made of, the stuff that these apparent different roles in the world of Brahman are made of, is always going to be there. Mind stuff, huh? chitta, is always going to be there because chitta is a potency of Brahman. Sat, chit, and Ananda. So it's always going to be there, at least in potential form. So we know from life experience that when we uh, have certainty on something, we can relax about it. Isn't it? Like if you have a really good friend and you know you can rely on your friend and he's always going to be there, you know, and, and always going to be the same loving, caring friend. You can relax about being alone when it's time to be alone. You don't have to be in anxiety because you know, oh, my friend is going to be there. 
And even though you may not be in the presence of your friend at the moment, just the fact that he's going to be there, the confidence in that fact makes it possible for you to relax, you know, which is similar to the suspension of disbelief in the world of Brahman. When the suspension of disbelief is in force, just like the children playing pirates or whatever, cowboys and Indians, the soul and the Lord can enjoy their roles to the max. Huh? And their play can become like really extreme because there is really nothing to it. It's all imaginary. Huh? You know, when the Indians shoot the cowboys with the arrows and they die, Oh, you got me. Huh? <laughs> they don't really die. So they're not afraid of dying even again and again in the game. Huh? Maybe the rules are, you know how kids are. They make up their own rules on the fly. <laughs> that when you die as a cowboy, then you go over to the side of the Indians. You know, I mean, anything can happen. That's the point. And it doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> In fact, if you think about it too much, you're going to ruin it. Because your suspension of disbelief will be void. So this is the pastimes. This is the leela of the spiritual world. And, and this is what we have to look forward to after liberation. Huh? It's liberation, but it's mukti liberation, not final moksha. There were five kinds of mukti, and we went over that in this video, so I'm not going to go all into it again. But the final one, when the playing field is finally destroyed at the end of the universe, is full merger with Brahman, huh? the soul and the Lord. Well, they've always been one, and they both know it. And they're just waiting for that day when they can merge into an ecstatic oneness at the end of the universe. And that's what it's like in the spiritual world. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.